everyone and welcome back to my channel. Surprise again, whip and chat time. Um, I thought I would wear off the script for today. I felt more like filming a whip and chat, which is very strange. Um, but we are going to see where this takes us. Um, so today is... Um, what is today? <laughs> Tuesday, August the 18th. And yeah, this is Heike. You're watching Stone Cold Coffee Crafts. I am very sorry for the fact that you probably won't see my little rag doll assistant in this one because in the whip and chat she is usually not very visible even though she can be very present. So we'll see if she will come up on the table um, and try to be a disturbance to my diamond painting groove. Um, which might very well be possible, but right now she is right behind me taking a nap. Um, it's 5 p.m. in the afternoon, actually it's quarter past five, so I'm pretty sure that today's video will be late, um, but I just got off work and I also got good bad news. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I will have to work tomorrow, which was not planned. Um, I think I have mentioned that I am on what's called shortened work hours right now. It is um, a tool the government gives to companies to help them through dire straits. And I guess I don't have to explain what the dire straits are at the moment. My company is going through it as well. Oh, there's the little assistant. You can probably hear her but not see her. Let me pause for a moment. All right, and we're back. So for my sanity purposes, I'm trying to get the little hellion to settle down and leave me in peace. I am doing this by, and I'm sorry I'm shaking you, putting her box on the table to see if she will lie down and let us be in peace. She is purring up a storm. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, but usually if I give her her current bed of choice, which right now is this wonderful cardboard box, um, she usually will be happy to lie down and have a nap and not be all up in my business, which is never a good thing during a weapon chat because exposed adhesive. Um, so what was I saying? I was talking about the shortened work hours thing, right? So. I was supposed to be off work for the rest of the week, but um, there has come up something which requires me to be there more than um, the powers that be believed me in the beginning. I told them right away that the time they gave me was not enough to do what was coming our way as far as my project goes, but now it is... Um, I guess proven fact and they have approved that I will be going into work figuratively because I'm working from home um, tomorrow and Thursday and I'll just be off on Friday and then I'm on vacation. <laughs> so yeah that's the news I got today and I don't know I I somehow felt like doing a whip and chat today not entirely sure why, but I guess if the urge hits, then you just go with the flow, right? Um, shall we talk a moment about the diamond? Oh, she, she lay down. Perfect. Um, shall we talk about the diamond painting for a moment? This is Siamese Teas by Mandy Manzano. The kit is um, from Diamond Art Club. It is currently my oldest Diamond Art Club painting in my stash and I am working this up for my current diamond painting theme of the month for the month of August which is cats because August happens to be not only my birthday month but also the cat's birthday month and I'm a crazy cat lady so I'm going to make all of August about my cats. <laughs> uh. But so far, the reaction I've seen to the to the theme is is incredible. So many people seem to be happy about it. Um, so I guess bullseye. <laughs> and I hope you will have much more fun with the rest of the month as well. Um, 
it's still time to join in. So if you're interested, I have uploaded a video on the 1st of August explaining it all. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out and see if it is something you would like to join. This is mainly run via YouTube, Instagram and email. So pretty much everyone should be able to join in whether you use social media or not. There's nothing to win, full disclosure. There's just fun to be had. Um, yeah, this is a round diamond painting kit as you have probably already seen because I managed to put the camera quite close up, I think. And I hope my hand is not constantly in the way. Um, but this is how I can set it up. It is sadly not going to get any better than this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I have some kind of epiphany about how to place my camera for a better viewing angle. This is what we get. Anyway, this is a round kit. It has... how many colors does this thing have? I should probably pull up my... I have so many windows open, it is unbelievable. It has 36 colors, one of which is an AB color. And I am currently on my third to last day of working on this. I have planned to have this done by Thursday night. So keep your fingers crossed that I can stick with the plan. Uh, the reason for that just being that I want to film the footage for the wrap up video and for the final review before I go on vacation because vacation will be no filming time for me. Um, just to take a break, I'll have videos up hopefully every single day. That's the current plan. I'm just trying to figure out if I have to change what I had planned right now um, to fill that up, but it should be possible to do it. But you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> so... <sighs> Did I say how big this thing is? 55 by 107 centimeter, which I think makes it officially just slightly smaller than Sneaky Cat, I believe. I think Sneaky Cat was even a bit longer, but it might not have been as wide. I'm not sure. Um, but I think you don't need that information. Diamond Art Club still, still sells this kit, um, but it's currently out of stock. And excuse me while I take a drink. It is not as boiling hot today as it used to be in the last days, the last few days. That's because we had quite a few thunderstorms in the last few days. It is currently looking like we are going to have one very soon, which will not amuse that one over there. Um, she, poor thing, had a horrible night on Sunday. Sunday going. Ugh. Yep, not do that. Um, Sunday going into Monday, that was a horrible night. Um, I think it was around 2 a.m. Um, and suddenly a big thunderstorm hit us. It was extremely loud all of a sudden. And it was fast. Um, I fir first heard it rumble in and then I think only... Five minutes later, around 2, 2.15 or something like that in the morning. Yes, I'm still awake at that time of the night. I am a night owl and an insomniac, both wrapped into one neurotic package. So I was still awake. That one was lying next to me, getting her belly wrapped. She was in kitty heaven and then there was such a loud clap of thunder. Whew. I startled, she completely went off the rails. Um, my boyfriend woke up and, and was, I think he had 200 beats per minute pulse at that moment. It was so freaking loud and it hit us so quickly. So basically um, she jumped off the bed and then I didn't hear or see of her again. Um, her sister woke up and came down off the scratching post where she was sleeping. But Nelly is this weird cat. Um, she will be 
absolutely complaining about any household appliance that makes any noise and she'll pretend that it's trying to kill her so she would never be one of these cats that writes um, a vacuum robot you know like the youtube videos you've seen she would probably pretend that thing is trying to kill her um, but whenever something comes up that is actually something cats should be afraid of she's actually the more fierce of the two so um whether we are talking dogs or firework or or like i said the super loud thunder nelly will be there and she will be complain about it but she won't be as afraid as lola was so i i couldn't find her i don't know why i i, I got up to close the the pasha doors we have two of them and usually during these temperatures I have my uh, blinds down um, most of the way and I leave the doors open so that during the night um, the fresh air can come in. Um, but if we have heavy rain like that, sometimes it actually manages to rain into my apartment. It has to be very heavy and very uh, slanted rain to do that. But um, I don't want to wake up one morning to discover that my um, floor is soaked and I'll have to put in a ton of money to fix that thing um, because I'm only renting and if I'm actually breaking stuff by being negligent, I have to pay for that. So <laughs> let's avoid that if we can do it. So I, I got up to close the doors. Um, and I couldn't find Lola anywhere. Anywhere. I looked through the whole apartment, any nook, any cranny she would go into. Um, and she was nowhere. It was actually funny. I was searching for the cat. Nelly was trailing me, giving these meow, 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 meow. I don't know what's going on. Make it stop. Complete meows off. And, and I couldn't find her. It even came to the point when the boyfriend really woke up and noticed that I was searching for the cat and couldn't find her she wouldn't come out when i tried to bribe her with her favorite treats you know the good ones she always gives me so much crap for when she gets the regular ones <laughs> um she wouldn't come out at all so for a moment i was really worried i in the end i found her under our bed our cats never go under our bed um i wouldn't either if i was them to be honest, it's it's a very dirty place. <laughs> There's a lot of dust going on underneath there. So I wouldn't go there either if I was a lady. But Lola, she hid underneath the bed, the poor thing. She came out when I when I knelt, knelt in front of the bed and basically tried to coax her out. She came out, so that was a lot of trust on her part. Um, but my little girl trusts me, I know that. Sometimes she doesn't like me very much, but she generally trusts me. <laughs> and yeah, she came out and um, I cuddled her for a bit and I tried to coax her back into bed. But she decided, no, nope, she was going to go back down underneath the bed. At least I knew where she was, so I could lie back down and try to sleep again. But we repeated this whole process of coming back into bed getting um, more cuddles and then another thunder interrupting us basically I think three more times so Sunday to Monday night was horrible I got hardly any sleep the cat was all grumpy um, all day the boyfriend was grumpy when he had to get up and get into work it was not a good day and the poor thing was so afraid it's kind of funny when we got them that first year we got them in early December um, when they were 16 weeks old and that first year we stayed home for for New Year's Eve to see how they react to firework and they were completely not interested in it they didn't care at all and we were really surprised about that because we fully expected that they would be afraid of the noise and would be nervous all night, but nothing happened. So the next year we decided we could accept 
an invitation from friends and actually go out for New Year's Eve. So we don't know how the second one went. But I don't know if it was a mistake to go out or if it is just a normal development that the younger kitties are less faced by something like that. But the third year we had them, we noticed that um, their behavior was like day and night. Um, and it has stayed like that. So they are very much afraid of the firework, which means on um, New Year's Eve, Lola will vanish around usually 10 p.m. because people start fireworks sometimes early. I don't know if it is just dumb people or people with smaller kids who want to give them a little bit of firework before they have to go to bed. Because I don't know how it was for you, but I, my parents tried to wake me up for the fireworks because I would pass to them for days that I wanted to see the firework and then I wouldn't be able to stay awake until midnight because why would I um and they would try to wake me up but I just wouldn't wake up um so yeah where was I going with that I don't know <laughs> I completely lost my train of thought here um anyway we noticed that third year that that Lola was extremely afraid that you ah yeah, the fireworks yes so maybe the parents I don't know they they are trying to give their kids firework to see before they put them to bed because they won't be able to rouse them again when the actual firework happens I don't know but at least uh, I would say a good portion of the firework that happens in this little town actually happens before midnight. And then when midnight actually hits, they go on and on and on and on. I don't know. I've never been the person to spend a ton of money for fireworks. I've actually never bought any kind of firework, if I remember correctly. Um, I go outside and watch what other people do. As far as firework goes, but I would never, never spend that amount of money. It's also basically because I, every year, I think, why, why are you actually doing this? You know how much it bothers not just your pets, but also the wild animals to do this. Um, and I see it with my cats. Sometimes um, people start firing off the the loud firework stuff that doesn't make any pretty lights just noise um, days before the actual event um, in Germany they are allowed to start selling fireworks on I believe it's December 27th and that's when some people start firing off the, the stuff and that's usually when my cats start to get nervous and Lola is the one who's afraid who will hide um, she's gone by 10 p.m. on New Year's Eve usually and she's under the bed. Um, Nelly will stay out. She is not hiding, but she'll growl. Whenever fireworks are fired off, she will growl. It usually only happens um, on New Year's Eve here or if you get a special permit for like a wedding or some kind of special event. And you can do it throughout the year, but you have to get a permit. You can't just go out and buy fireworks and shoot it off throughout the year. And um, so it doesn't happen very often. But when it happens, Nelly will growl like a dog. <laughs> so they are both not big fans. And I don't fault them. It's it's a lot of noise and it's a lot of weird smells and yeah. That's why I usually don't go out for for New Year's any longer. I stay home. I'm not trying to do anything special, like trying to calm them or anything. I just behave normal. But um, I think it actually helps when we are there. Um, which doesn't mean that I force the boyfriend to stay home. I have told him he can go out. I don't care. Um, it is nice if he wants to give me a kiss on midnight, but I don't need it to survive, so that's that's entirely fine. But yeah, he usually won't do that. That one year he actually went out. Um, 
that's when he accepted an invitation without asking me first and I told them, well, yes, you can go, but uh, forget about me going. I'm staying right where I am. And yep, don't give me that look. I don't care. I did not accept this invitation and you didn't ask me, so deal with it. And um, he actually came home before midnight. <laughs> I don't know why. I didn't tell him to. <laughs> but he wanted to, obviously. Yeah, we are a weird couple sometimes. I want him gone and he never goes. <laughs> Guys, sometimes having him home all the time is really annoying. That's that's why I'm actually happy that he has these long working days compared to me. So I have a few hours every day where I am already off work and he's not here. On the other hand, I feel bad for that. But why can't he just go back to playing handball twice a week? It was so nice to have him out of the house for a few hours. And nearly every time I would get a text afterwards and him telling me he's going to have a beer with the team. And I am always thinking, yes, thank goodness, more time for myself. <laughs> yeah, worst girlfriend ever, I know. That what 20 years do to you. And anyway, last night was another thunderstorm night, but it wasn't so bad, so she did cope a bit better with that. I hope tonight will be more like that because I always feel so sorry for her when she feels so insecure. You want to protect them, but how do you explain to your cat that nothing is going to happen to them? I haven't figured it out yet. So anyway, guys, how are you doing? I have... Yesterday I started the... The Midnight Away mystery stitch along from the Frosted Pumpkin stitchery. I only did a very, very small start on it. Um, geez, my stomach is rumbling. I didn't have lunch. Um, only did a very small start. I didn't really feel like doing anything after I had finished my diamond painting sections. I also didn't knit. Um, it was just one of these days where you feel very drained. But I guess after... A night like that, it's not very surprising that I didn't have a whole lot of energy. Um, yeah, so I made a small start on that, but it's going to be so cute. Frosted pumpkin stitchery might not be to everyone's taste. I think that's actually a trash troll. Um, but it sure is always right up my alley. So... I'm probably going to do a ton of more stitch alongs in the future because I seem to be drawn to them. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. I don't know, probably going to have a daily crafty chat tomorrow. At least that's the plan. I have to see when I'm doing it. Um, I'm going to try to film it before work. Let's keep your fingers crossed and see how that works out. And that I'm actually going to do some more stitching and maybe some knitting today. Um, it is much cooler, so it should be not so much of an effort. But to be honest with you, I didn't get a whole lot more sleep last night than I did Sunday to Monday, so we'll have to see. And I have a cat hair stuck to my nose, which is annoying me right now. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much... All I have I can talk about right now. I'm still not caught up with my replies to your lovely comments. Um, and I'm so sorry for that. I, I, low energy, guys, low energy. I really want to do it. And then I'm, I'm sitting before my in front of my computer and I'm thinking, well, you've, you've been in front of a computer all day. Let's do something different. Anyhow, there you go. Procrastinated for another day. But I appreciate them all so much. And one of these days, I will actually be able to show that to you. It will happen at some point. But because I didn't want to make this a 22-minute whip and chat, I have actually brought a tag. And it's a question and answer tag. It's basically, I think it's nearly 400 questions total. 
I have no idea if we are actually going to do all of them over I don't know how many whipping chats, but I thought it would be a nice thing maybe to fill in some time um, when I don't have anything to just talk off my chest, so also to speak. And um, I thought it would also be a good thing for all the people that have subscribed to my channel after the first get to know me tag I did way back when I think when I it was the first video when I started my channel I believe um, I thought I would start with that so that's been nearly 18 months now I think like 16 months now so I guess it's time to do another one like that and I decided to do one that doesn't start with what's your name or when were you born? And I'm going to do a bit of a different one because you already know what my name is and I told you when my birthday is and stuff like that. So um, this is a question answer um, tag I found on tagquestions.net and we are going to do, I don't know, the first 10, 15 maybe? And then I'm going to call it a day and try to get this edited and uploaded. Um, I'm not going to listen back to this whole thing. So if if I am misspeaking and not noticing it, which happens quite often, and usually I correct myself in form of a little text blurping up on the, on the screen or something like that, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to try and talk slowly and I'm trying not to um, spout any gibberish like it sometimes happens. It will happen. I won't be able to avoid it all, but I'm not going to go back and listen back and edit it all because then I will not be able to upload this video today. It just takes too much time to do so. Anyways, um, let's get started with that, shall we? And if you're not interested and you are switching off now, thank you for being here. And I hope you'll be back tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> and let's get this started. Question number one. After a breakup, would you rather be alone or be surrounded by friends? Well, that's a doozy to start on, isn't it? Um, I have only had one breakup in my whole life. And I was the one breaking up. So that was all the way back when, after that um, that Paris story I told you in the second installment of the What's in My Stash for my Diamond Art Club kids. I think it was the second video. Um, that's when it happened because I did not mention in that particular video, it wasn't a story time video. I just threw that in there for poops and giggles. So I didn't mention at that point that when we went on this class trip to Paris and um, the boyfriend and I developed mutual, mutual feelings for each other <laughs> without telling the other so, that I was um, still in a relationship with my first boyfriend. So nothing happened in Paris, nothing at all. Um, he is way too respectful to do that and I would never have considered it and um, so nothing happened. I only learned about the fact that he um, had fallen in love on the way back, actually. <laughs> so when everything was already said and done and Paris was in the rearview mirror, that's when I learned because he behaved strangely on the last day there and on the trip back. And yeah, that's when a mutual friend told me what was going on. But at this point, I was still in a relationship with my first boyfriend. And when our friend told me about this, I spent the rest of the bus trip, which was quite a long time, thinking about what was going on, how I felt about it, how I felt about him and what I was going to do about it. So by the time we were back home, um, I pretty much had made up my mind that I was going to break up with my boyfriend. I had then, not because of my now boyfriend, 
but because I realized that the rela relationship I was in was actually not what I wanted. Um, it was okay, but I didn't want to settle for okay. And <laughs> I decided, okay, no matter what is coming out of this whole story with my now boyfriend, I'm going to break up with the guy I was with. Mm. That relationship was actually a long distance relationship. It wasn't really that long of a distance. But we lived like 70 kilometers apart and we only saw each other on the weekend. And also right after this uh, trip, we had school vacation and I had booked a job for that vacation. So we didn't see each other during that week either. I think I saw him like two weeks after the Paris trip on that weekend. And that's when we broke up. And I don't know. I didn't mind it too much. I think that's that's a big sign how, how little I cared at this point about the relationship. But I did not have a hard time dealing with it afterwards. Actually breaking up with him did affect me because it affected him um so that was actually hard but once that was done I'm, i was good so i did not go through the whole breakup routine i'm pretty sure it would be very different if it happened with current boyfriend not just because we have been together for nearly 20 years now but also because um this is a whole different relationship um this is much more what I was looking for. And I'm saying much more because um, I think it is a fact of life that no relationship is 100% perfect. And so mine isn't either. But it is much more what I wanted for myself than what I had for the first one. So I have no idea. But I guess if that happened now I would be more of a leave me alone for a while for a while kind of person I probably would chat with them um, very close friends I have online I do not have really close friends that are actually real life friends um, which might be a sad thing to say but I've never been a super outgoing person and to be honest with you ever since the internet hit us which was around the time I was 15, 16, something like that. Um, my most meaningful relationships, as far as friends go, um, have happened online. It's usually people I meet online. At some point, I'm going to meet them in real life and we are going to click, but it's still people I met online. Sometimes they live very far away. Um, the person who is taking the cake right now is actually Jessie because she is in the US <laughs> and actually my my real life best friend has been in the US for the last oh god when did she move it's been so long I moved here in 12 and I think she moved in 14 to the US might have been 15 but I think it was actually 2014 and I haven't seen her in person since because she has not come home since she, she is still in the US um, somewhere in Massachusetts <laughs> don't ask me <laughs> she is as bad as keep as I in um, at keeping in contact so we chat from time to time but we are not actually actively staying in in each other's life at this point in time um, which is a bit sad, but we've always done that. It's it's a very weird type of friendship. We we always lose track of each other, sometimes for years, and then we get back together, and it's like no time has passed. It's the weirdest thing, but that's probably why she is my best friend. Um, because you can't just do that with everyone out there. Anyway, that's a very long answer to that question. So yeah, I probably would would sequester myself away and do the hermit thing. I always do. Uh, <laughs> question number two. Wow. 
<laughs> That's a way to start off um, attack. After a divorce, would you rather share custody or get full custody? Custody. Well, that's another thing. I've never been in this situation. I don't have kids. But the one thing that always irked me when I saw people divorce is that they could not pull themselves together for the sake of the kids, that they had to weaponize the kid. And if there is no real reason to take custody away from my partner, um, I, being the childless, non-married person I am, feel you should put your, your own feelings aside and you should do what's best for your kids. And that's giving them the opportunity to spend time with both their parents. Of course, if there is a reason to keep them away from their other parent, and there are reasons, good reasons to do that, then all right, feel free to do so. Um, but I feel like I would not have to do that with my current partner if we had kids. And um, it should be really good reasons. I think most people do it out of spite, and I don't understand that, because it's not about you, it's about your kids. Um, they should come first and you should always think of their needs first. But humans are strange beings, so I don't know if I ever actually were in that position, if I would do as I say or not. <laughs> so let's hope it never comes to that. Um, yeah. Any new and exciting things that you would like to share? Uh, not at that point. Um, I think I shared everything new even if it wasn't that exciting, at the beginning of this weapon chat. Uh, are you a dog person or a cat person? I think this question is very redundant. Um, I am a cat person. I like dogs just fine, but if I have a choice, I'm always going to choose cats. Um, they are just much more like I am, I guess. Um, are you a fan of any sports team? Nope. Nope, nope. The only thing I find more boring than doing sports is watching them. Um, are you a good co cook? I um, like to think that I'm a pretty decent cook. I don't know if I'm what people would consider good, but I think I'm, I'm rather decent. Um, there are a lot of things I can actually make from scratch, considering I'm one of the kids that grew up with convenience everywhere. Um, my parents were both working and cooking for them mostly was using a lot of convenient stuff and then throw in some fresh wedgies and yep, that was it. <laughs> I think I'm pretty decent at this point in my life. Although I have to say right now, I don't really like to cook. It's something I'm struggling with right now. I started off strong at the beginning of, of all the madness that's going on right now. So I had all my meals planned out for the whole week. And we would do this one crochet trip. And I would buy everything on that one trip, which I never did. Because we live right above a small supermarket. So usually it was we doing this weekly trip on Friday to get the stuff we can't get down there. And for the rest of it, we would just go down and let inspiration hit us. <laughs> Am I actually? I think I'm painting the right symbol, yeah. <laughs> uh, are you a hoarder? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone who's seen my craft room knows that yes. Yes, I am. Not about everything, but the things I care for, yes. The boyfriend tends to call me obsessive. So usually if I get into so if I get into something I get all the way into something and yeah it reflects. <laughs> and sometimes I'm good with letting stuff go and sometimes I keep thinking I am going to do this one day so I shouldn't get rid of it. <laughs> this room I'm in right now is a mess people and it's now taking over parts of the living room. So I have to really, really, really do something about it and have to get rid of some stuff. 
So let me know if there are any uh, paper crafters um, among you, if you would be interested in basically, I guess the paper stuff is only interesting for my German, maybe European viewers, but if you would be interested in a stamping deed stash, for example, I have so many stamps I am never going to use in my life again. Um, and I'm thinking about de-stashing, but I'm also dreading it because it's a lot of work. Um, but if you were interested in that, I might try to do that. Let me know. Are you a morning person or a night owl? I am absolutely 100% a night owl. I have never been a morning person. Mornings are made of 100% evil. <laughs> I have been told that most of the people who are born in the middle of the night actually are night owls. And that's very true for me. I was born at uh, 4 a.m. in the morning. So, yeah. <laughs> and I really am. I can readjust my inner clock somewhat to normal people time but I will revert back the moment you give me time off so every weekend screws with my sleeping schedule because I will no matter how tired I am I am probably going to be awake at 3 a.m Friday to Saturday night I shouldn't be and I don't plan to be but I usually am Question number nine. Are you an early adopter or late adopter? I guess this is meaning do I always use the latest and greatest? Um, I am an early adopter with anything considering computers, I guess. Um, I am not so much with all these phone and social media shenanigans. I never managed to get into anything like like Facebook. So I was there for all of it. Um, I was born in 89. So I was a teenager when the whole internet thing became, became a thing. And I was there for... MySpace and Life Journal and Facebook seeing the light of the day and I was not there for most of it. The one thing I could actually um, find the most use for was Life Journal. I used that quite a bit in the years 2003 and forward. But stuff like Facebook and Twitter and MySpace and uh, how they were all called. I never understood what that is about. I liked online message boards, so the good old message boards. Um, those I, I could click with, but that's about it. And I really, really, really did never understand the whole mobile phone thing. So that started to become a thing when I was still in school. And back in the day, you know, the days of the Nokia 51 something. Um, yeah, I was there for it. <laughs> and I was there for all the idiot kids who obviously had parents with too much money, um, who got these super expensive phones and would sit in their school breaks and play these horrible ringtones at each other. The midi ringtones. <laughs> I hated those people. So that was never much for me. I did get a cell phone for my 18th birthday. That was because 18 is the age where you can get your driver's license in Germany. And my parents actually, or more my mother, wanted me to have a mobile phone for that. Um, because she was worried about me driving and not being able to call at any time of the day. <laughs> so that's when I got my first mobile phone. Got it from my parents, prepaid. Didn't want it. Didn't really use it for anything, but I had it with me. Because otherwise I would have been disinherited. So we did that. And um, when did I get my first smartphone? 
My mother had a smartphone before I did, so that's how much I hate phones. My first smartphone was my work phone. It was a Palm work phone. I used to work for HP, and HP bought Palm. And that's when we got um, the Pre-2, I think it was called. The last one that came out as, as a Palm. Um, that's the one I got. <sighs> I didn't even want a mobile phone for work. Not everyone got it, but I got it because of my job. Didn't want it. Had it. <laughs> Wasn't a fan. But I think I finally caved and got one. I was already living here, that's for sure. Yeah. And the, literally the only time ever I splurged on a phone was when I got my current one, the one I'm also filming with, because at some point in time I decided, okay, I'm going to buy one good phone now. I'm going to have it for years and um, I'm not going to think about it anymore because I used to have crappy Android phones that would have cost me something between 160 and 200 something euro and they would keep breaking and I was so annoyed and I hated an Android and yeah. So I got my my iPhone, which I'm using now. It was totally over the top to get it, especially considering I don't even have a cell phone um, plan. I use prepaid cards. <laughs> but it's a good camera. I've been getting a lot of use out of it in the last one and a half years doing YouTube videos, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, so yes and no, I guess. Oh. Am I? Oh no, I'm not off camera. Sorry. I was just wondering, how did I get off camera? But I'm not. <laughs> so computer stuff, yes. Um, phone and other stuff, not so much. I even was a late adopter for the whole digital video thing. Didn't like the idea. Um, but now, due to space reasons, I have finally moved over to mostly just buying digital movies and just getting the Blu-rays for the stuff I really, really want to have as a physical copy. And we have, I think, pretty much every streaming service that's available in Germany, except for Sky. Um, so yeah, there's that. Question number 10. Are you close to anyone now that you initially disliked? I don't think so. No, I really don't think so because I... A, I'm not very close to a lot of people, period. And usually I am not super quick to judge whether I like or dislike you. Or mostly the dislike part but I can't remember the last time I really really disliked someone and then for whatever reason changed my mind so I would say no no number 11 are you high maintenance I don't believe so I mean I think I'm the wrong person to answer this question other person should people should answer that <laughs> <laughs> because I think everyone thinks of themselves as not high maintenance unless they are very self-aware or very proud of the fact that they are. Uh, yeah, that's the right symbol. Um, so no, I don't think so. But you probably would have to ask other people to get the definite answer, answer on that. What do you think? Do you come across as high maintenance? Should I have asked that? <laughs> um, number 12. Are you more inclined to build your own empire or unleash the potential of others? I guess since I don't have an empire right now, but I've been told I am quite supportive, um, I am more of the second type. I don't know. I'm not the most competitive of people. So I don't think that I fit that personality profile of building empires. Just my guess. You could also say I'm just lazy. <laughs> That's probably the short answer. 
<laughs> but I like to be supportive of people that I consider my friends or at least like. So there you go. Um, are you more likely to avoid conflict or engage it head on? I don't think it's going to be a surprise if I say I am a person who actively avoids conflict. Um, if you pull me into it, I'll probably engage if I absolutely have to, but I usually consider it a waste of time and breath and energy because the my experience is that you won't change people's minds anyway um, in 99 of 100 cases, so pff, why bother? Again, the lazy comes through. Um, question number 14. Are you named after anyone? No, I'm not. I am not. The main, the, the, the way my name came to be is pretty simple. Um, my mother, when she was pregnant, I, and she did not know if she was going to get a girl or a boy. I think back in the 80s, most people still went with the I'm going to be surprised at birth um, approach. So she had figured out what she wanted to call me in in case I was a boy or a girl. For the boy, she chose um, the name Florian, which I'm very glad didn't turn out. <laughs> because um, that is usually shortened down to Flo, which is... Um, what is that called in English? can't remember. The little pestilences dogs and cats can get that makes them itch. <laughs> so I did not want to be that. Um, and for a girl, she either wanted to call me Jennifer or Simone. Or like you English people would probably say Simone. In German it's Simone. And yeah, that was her plan for me. And when I was actually born, my father went off to the office in the hospital that fills out the birth certificate. And when they asked him what his daughter's name was, he said Heike. <laughs> he never talked about it with her. And I actually learned later on that he did the very same thing with my brother. So his mother actually wanted to call my brother Andreas, which is the German word, version of Andrew. And when he was born, <laughs> my father went off to the office to fill out the birth certificate. And he told the guys there that his son is named Michael. <laughs> so did it twice. And his reasoning behind choosing this very old-fashioned, very German name for me was that he wanted A, a German name, and B, something that could not be shortened down to a nickname. And I have to say, mission accomplished. He also managed to choose a name that literally no one knows how to pronounce unless they are from a country which speaks a language that is based on German. Which pretty much narrows it down to Germany, Switzerland, um, Austria, the Netherlands, and parts of Belgium. <laughs> and all the rest is breaking their tongue trying to say it. Um, he does not feel guilty for that, by the way. <laughs> So yeah, I guess these days, um, if you were the father of a child and did that, your wife, partner, girlfriend, whatever, would actually kill you for, for doing that. And I think my mother was really angry about it, but yeah, she accepted it. She kept telling me that the, the nurse um, in the hospital who was taking care of her most of the time, was super happy about it because she had the same name and it was very rare for kids to be named that. It still is. It still is. It's, it's never been a name that has been in fashion, I think, for the last hundred years or so. <laughs> 
And that even now, where people tend to give their kids um, very old-fashioned names. The names that have been coming up again in the last 15 years or so. Uh, ridiculous. Ridiculous. I still remember when I started to work for for um, the manager that would become my boss of, I think, nearly 10 years, the one I'm still working with right now as my project sponsor. Um, when I came to work for him, I actually replaced his assistant who was going on maternity leave, and she was having a son. And she absolutely, for whatever reason, wanted to call her son Oscar. And Oscar is such an old fashion name it's <laughs> and also i'm going to suspect it's it's the same in the american version of sesame street because we dub everything here in german and um in germany and we also often rename things so i'm going to think that um that guy from the sesame street who lives in the trash can is also called oscar in english he is at least in in the German version, and when she told us, so the boss and me, about that she wanted to call her son Oscar, he started laughing and um, told her she could un he could understand that her husband did not want this name, because the first thing he was thinking of when she said it was Oscar from the trash can. He had a three-year-old daughter at that point, so... <laughs> <laughs> right in in that bracket where kids watch Sesame Street. Um, yeah. But I've never understood why you would give your kid such a name. On the other hand, I don't I also don't understand why you name your kid Anakin. So let's be frank about that. <laughs> anyway, tangent. Um, let's make this the last question because we are at 55 minutes and this is actually question 15. Are you satisfied with how you spent your money? What would you change? No, I'm, I'm literally spending way too much money on craft stuff and, um, it is a ridiculous and yes, it's fun. It's fun. All the yarn in the world and all the floss in the world. This year it hasn't been a lot of diamond painting. At least I've stopped with that. But if you've seen my stash videos, my first three, you know that I did that last year with all the diamond paintings in the world. While it's fun to have them all, it is uh, so ridiculous to buy all that stuff. And yet I'm with every new hobby I pick up, I'm doing it all over again. Um, so if I had any more self-discipline, I would change that and I would stop buying all the things all the time whenever I discover something new and just start small and slow, but I never do that. Anyway, guys, I'm going to call it quits here. We've nearly made it to an hour. I hope I did not mess up and misspeak too much. I'm kind of nervous about uploading this like it is. I never do that. Um, but I'm going to do so today. So fingers crossed. If I did say something very strange, very wrong, please don't laugh at me. <laughs> Just remember, not the language I speak all day. <laughs> and my brain is weird sometimes. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me for this. If you like this, you know what to do. I think Lola and myself, we are going to be back tomorrow with a crafty chat because there's literally no other plan I could switch out for that. So fingers crossed that I'll get a lot of things done today and can show you tomorrow. And I hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful week, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys.